Whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. Now, premise one seems obviously true. It's rooted in the metaphysical truth that something cannot come from nothing. Moreover, this premise is constantly confirmed in our experience. So the really crucial premise is premise two. I'm going to present four separate arguments on behalf of premise two tonight. The first argument is based on the impossibility of an actually infinite number of things. It goes like this. An actually infinite number of things cannot exist. A beginningless universe involves an actually infinite number of past things. Therefore, a beginningless universe cannot exist. Now, in this argument, premise two is obvious. If the universe never began to exist, then prior to today, there have been an infinite number of past causes or events in the history of the universe. So the crucial premise is premise one. The best way to prove it is to give examples that illustrate the various absurdities that would result if an actually infinite number of things could exist in the real world. Take, for example, one of my favorites, Hilbert's Hotel. This is the brainchild of the great German mathematician David Hilbert. Hilbert invites us to imagine a hotel with an infinite number of rooms. And suppose that all the rooms are full. There is not a single vacant room throughout the entire infinite hotel. Now, suppose a new guest shows up asking for a room. He's out of luck, right? Wrong. No problem, says the clerk. And he immediately shifts the person in room one into room two. The person in room two into room three. The person in room three into room four and so on out to infinity. As a result of these room changes, room number one now becomes vacant. And the new guest gratefully checks in. But remember, before he arrived, all the rooms were full. But the situation becomes even stranger. For suppose that an infinite number of new guests show up at the desk. Of course, of course, says the clerk. And he proceeds to shift the person in room one into room two, the person in room two into room four, the person in room three into room six, and so on out to infinity, always moving each person into the room number twice his own. As a result, all of the odd-numbered rooms become vacant, and the infinity of new guests is easily accommodated. And yet, before they came, all the rooms were full. In fact, the clerk could repeat this process infinitely many times, and he could always accommodate new guests, even though there are no empty rooms. But Hilbert's hotel is even stranger than the great mathematician made it out to be. For suppose some of the guests start to check out. What happens then? Suppose the guests in all the odd-numbered rooms check out. In this case, an infinite number of people have departed, but there are still an infinite number of people left in the hotel. But now suppose instead that the persons in rooms four, five, six, and so on checked out. At a single stroke, the hotel would be virtually empty, and only three people would be left. And yet, the same number of guests checked out this time as when all the guests in the odd-numbered rooms checked out. You subtract identical quantities from the same quantity and get contradictory answers. In summary, since an actually infinite number of things cannot exist and the beginningless universe involves an actually infinite number of past things, it follows that a beginningless universe cannot exist. The second argument that I'll give on behalf of premise two is based on the impossibility of forming an actually infinite number of things by adding one member after another. It goes like this. A collection formed by adding one member after another cannot be actually infinite. The series of past events is a collection formed by adding one member after another. Therefore, the series of past events cannot be 
actually infinite. Now once again, premise two seems pretty obvious. The series of past events is not a collection, all of whose members coexist. Rather, it's a collection that was formed by adding one member at a time. So the crucial premise is premise one, that a collection formed by adding one member after another cannot be actually infinite. Sometimes this is described as the impossibility of traversing the infinite. In order for us to have arrived at today, existence has, so to speak, traversed an infinite number of prior events to reach the present event. But before the present event could arrive, the event before it would have to arrive. But before that event could arrive, the event before it would have to arrive, and so on and on back to infinity. No event could ever arrive since before it could happen, there will always be one more event that had to have happened first. Thus, if the series of past events were beginningless, the present event could not have arrived, which is absurd. But now a deeper absurdity bursts into view. For if the present event could somehow arrive after an infinite number of prior events, then why didn't the present event arrive yesterday? Since by then an infinite series of past days had already elapsed. No reason can be given why the present event arrived only today instead of at any time in the infinite past. At any point in the infinite past, the present event should have already happened, which is absurd. In summary, then, if a collection formed by adding one member after another cannot be actually infinite, then it follows that a beginningless universe cannot exist. 